Hey guys, welcome to groups. As we, well, probably guys and gals. Do we call women gals anymore? I don't think we do. Hello, gentlemen and ladies. We don't call guys gentlemen, but it's guys and ladies sounds weird. Guys and women. I don't like that one either. All right, welcome to Groups Time. This is going to go poorly. As we get going, uh, just kind of looking back and, and exploring the idea of the eyes of our heart, of actually wanting to see Jesus, and what will we do to see him? And when we encounter Jesus, do we just want a little bit enough to get us out of hell and... Um, and not really have to change any of ourselves? Or do we want to see Jesus for who he is and in seeing him and experiencing the conviction of the Holy Spirit uh, be transformed? I think in the story of Zacchaeus and the story of um, of the, my mind just totally went blank, but I'm good with it. The story of Zacchaeus and the uh, blind beggar, what we know is this, that the calling out to Jesus and wanting to see him opened his eyes, not only physically, but there was a spiritual openness to be transformed by the conviction of the Spirit. And in Zacchaeus, he was this wealthy man who had really, um, in my view and understanding, come to the end of his own wealth and the end of his own things. He had everything he wanted and he wasn't satisfied. So he did the unlikely thing of climbing a tree and getting a view for Jesus. Will we call out? Will we climb up? Will we do whatever it takes to get ourselves out of the viewfinder and put Jesus front and center. That is really the challenge of this teaching. Will you do whatever it takes to get face to face with Jesus and experience the call and the obedience to transformation, to repent, confess, and turn towards him? That's the challenge of the church, to live without ourselves front and center, but with him front and center. All right, groups, questions for our kids. So, and this is for the adults too, but the kids will, you know what, everybody help me out. Who remembers this song? Remember it? Zacchaeus was a wee little man and a wee little man was he. Thank you. Um, He climbed up in a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. All right, I, my falsetto, I have a cold, so normally I'm much worse than this. Um, and as the Savior walked that way, he looked up in the tree. Oh, <laughs> that would be bad. And he said, Zacchaeus, you come down, for I'm going to your house. This is the big question. This is so embarrassing. Okay, in my tradition growing up, we said something. <laughs> Stop. Don't laugh. It's so rude. I'm on camera. You can't laugh, Erica. So it says, for I'm going to your house. What do you say? What was Jesus going to his house? Was he going to the house today? Oh, shh. Oh. Or was he going to his house for tea? Because that's what he said. (laughs) Huh? For I'm going to your house today. Or for me, it was because I'm going to your house for tea. I don't know. Maybe we're British. It seems right. So which one was it for you? Which one did he go? Did he go to the house today or for tea? I just want to find out from you. So you can text me. You can email me. You can even reply on when we post the sermon online. Which one did he go for? For today or for tea? Anyways, question number one. Uh, kids, what did the blind man and Zacchaeus have in common? Question number two, have you ever wondered why we close our eyes to pray? Have you ever wondered about that? I, I think part of it is we want to we focus our hearts or the eyes of our own heart on Jesus. Get rid of the distractions around us that want our attention. So what are some of the things that you can do every day to help the eyes of your heart stay focused on Jesus? The blind man needed to call out to Jesus for help. Zacchaeus had to climb a tree and get to get out of his normal surroundings so he could see Jesus. Is there anything that you need to call out for Jesus to help you with? I 
Thank you, kids, for joining us for uh, Kids Group Questions. I hope you had a great day. I hope that you have a nice time with people coming to your house for tea. Because that's what the song says he did. All right, here we go with our group's questions for you grown-ups. Don't you hate that you're a grown-up sometimes? So much easier when you were a kid. But you're grown-ups now, so you get other questions. Sorry for the discouragement to begin. I should probably restart. No? We're going to stay with it. Question number one. Have you ever been so narrowly focused, so dialed in on something like on your cell phone or uh, doing something that you walked into like a pole or you walked into something or tripped and almost wiped out, or maybe you did wipe out. Have you ever done that? When the blind man called out to Jesus and he said, Son of David, Jesus, Son of David, this was significant because he was declaring that he believed Jesus was the promised Messiah or Savior. He called out for mercy and believed Jesus could heal him. Why could this man see who Jesus was when the others around him could not? Have you ever been spiritually blind? Read the story of the rich man in Luke 18, uh, 18 to 29, and then answer this question at the end. Why was the rich man sad? Question five. Read Luke 18. Uh, verses 9 to 14, and then answer this, qu- this question. Which man saw or recognized his own need for God? Zacchaeus had a booster seat at the table. Do you think Zacchaeus was embarrassed that he had to climb a tree to see Jesus? I feel like I asked that in the weirdest, most awkward way possible. Question number six. Do you think Zacchaeus, no. All right, question six. Do you think Zacchaeus was embarrassed that he had to climb a tree in order to see Jesus? I think he was. All right, we're going to answer a community question. No, we're going to make a community statement. (laughs) All right. Oh, my love handle. So I want to give a little shout out and a plug to our groups, uh, you guys who are watching this, because I think it's kind of cool what's going on. I got a text this past week. I think it was Marge Taylor who sent me a picture of their small group. They were actually all in Florida, and they were vacationing, and they met up. Uh, and did group stuff there, which I think is awesome. I don't think they did groups content. I think they were just together socially having fun, which I love that kind of community. I know the Nagelkirks small group went to an escape room. Um, I know they had a ton of fun, but they are one couple didn't make it, so they need another. So if you're in, no, I'm joking. They did great. They had a blast. They were all out together, um, and they did the escape room. I know some of the groups did uh, like the Feed My Starving Children thing or the hand-to-hand packing food, things like that where you can do service projects. You can just go do, um, have fun together. And one of the things I love about that is our groups are centered on the Word of God, but there's also this huge social component to it. I invite you, go have fun, go do stuff together and and party it up. Enjoy being in a community that knows you in vulnerable ways, but also has fun together. So if you want to do escape rooms or go paintballing, I think paintballing is fun. That was kind of random. I just thought of that, but I love paintball until I get shot in the leg because it really stings. But other than that, it's awesome. And I would invite you as groups to not only gather and do the group's content, but try to 
once in a while, maybe once every semester, do a service project. Do a, uh, a missional opportunity. Go and just do something fun together and have a blast. Go out to dinner, go do an event. Anything you can do that builds community and allows you to be connected, not only around the Word of God, but in the community of God. Be a part of each other's lives in social, spiritual, and emotional ways. Enjoy being connected because being part of a healthy small group is one of the greatest gifts that I think God has given us. It's a chance to be known and know others and hold that tension of, of being in deep relationship and being transformed together into the image of Jesus Christ. So well done to you groups who are not only doing the content, but you're out doing life together. And for those of you who haven't, you feel a little jealous, I think you should go do something fun. Have fun. Enjoy being part of a group. If I had a rock, I would whip it at you right now. I would. I'd throw it at your ankle. Just being, oh. All right. I'd throw it at Kyle's body. He would have bruises. <laughs> Why are you so bruised? I work at the foundry. I, they throw rocks at me. <laughs> Ah, stoned at the foundry. Oh, sorry, we shouldn't say that, but we were in Colorado. Yeah, can you imagine? You're like, we're going to stone you to death, but there's only very small rocks. This is going to be horrid.